how to find your next listing. This is the conversation of the moment for every real estate agent, right? So I, I actually tossed around a few different titles for this webinar, and this seems to be the one that's most, I would say, requested. Everybody wants to know there's a shortage of inventory and listings is what agents are always looking for. I wrote down three things that you're going to get out of this webinar today. The first one, obviously, we're going to talk about where to find a listing right now because there are listings out there right now every single day and you should be the agents taking those listings then i'm going to share with you a couple of scripts on some common objections that are really a product of the market today and then i want to give you i believe it's six or seven steps on what you need to be doing on a daily basis to be able to find those listings. And we're gonna talk about who you should be calling and why you should be calling them and the different types of sellers out there that you may not even think they were sellers. So Marielena Arias, welcome, beautiful. She is unmuted. She's a very good friend of mine. I've known her for a long time, I don't know, several years. And Marielena, is the manager of a large real estate branch or office here in Miami where I live. And the last webinar, I had a guest too, to do some role plays, share some ideas, bring up some of the questions or objections that your agents and, and challenges your agents are facing, Marilena, so we can have a conversation about them, be able to help all the ones that are here. Okay. We have a lot of challenges. A lot of challenges. <laughs> And are, are most of those challenges related to the lack of inventory? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the right webinar for all of us here then. I, just to set the tone for this conversation, some of you if, you, if you've been around me for a little while, you know I'm a motivational quote junkie. And there are two quotes that I want to share with you. I'd like you to write them down since you have your pen and paper there because they're going to set the tone for how we're going to start this conversation. The first quote is, things may come to those who wait, but only the things that are left by those who hustle. Uh-huh. And the second one is, when you believe something is going to work out, you'll find opportunities. When you believe it won't, you'll find obstacles. Why do I share those two quotes with you in the beginning of this webinar today? Because most agents around the country, and I coach and train and work with hundreds of agents around the country and Canada and some in Europe as well. Most agents that I speak with right now, they're only seeing obstacles in this market. And the conversation, Marilena, you, you know, you could correct me here, share what you're hearing from your agents. The conversation is there are no listings. There is no inventory. And if I have any buyers, it's, it's multiple offers. It's crazy. And we're not being able to get any properties. Share with me anything else that you're hearing from agents. What, what exactly are they going through in this market? They're extremely frustrated. Mm -hmm. They are really frustrated. They are tired, right? They're tired of putting in multiple offers of driving buyers around. Yeah. When they go for a listing, the seller is shooting them down, you know, to like no commission, you know, like it's crazy to even work for that listing. Yeah. Or yep. they just don't want to work with, with a realtor. Why should I, when I could just do it on my own? Absolutely. So Absolutely. This is the last month's webinar was about how to list fizzbles in a seller's market. If you did not, join it or you saw that it's on my youtube channel so just go to youtube find jack kravitz channel and watch it because that 
the fizzballs are the, the, the market of the moment. I mean, one of the biggest listing opportunities are fizzballs right now, but it's gonna take a very specific conversation because obviously, of course they could sell it on their own. So just go check out that webinar. But I, I hear you, Marilena, how agents would be frustrated if I was, I mean, if I was working with buyers, I don't care what market, I'd be frustrated too, okay? Even if it was a buyer's market, if buyers are, you know, they're tough. I mean, that's just my experience. I'm biased towards listings. Now, when it comes to the mindset, you know, the quote that I shared with you, when you, when you believe something is gonna work out, you'll see opportunities. When you believe you won't, you'll find obstacles. If you keep this conversation going with yourself about, there's no inventory. This is a tough market. Fizzbulls don't want to list with an agent. They don't want to pay a commission. And I, I don't know how to get listings. I can't take any listings. You're having this conversation with yourself and you're surrounded by other agents or people who are saying the same thing. Let me, let me stop right here. How could you possibly find any opportunities in this market? You can't. You know, when I say mindset is everything, it is everything. Because if you don't believe that it's possible for you to take well-priced listings that full commission in this market, you will not be able to do it. It defies logic. It's just like, unless it's, it's just like a fluke, it's not gonna happen. So the first thing you have to do in addition to, yeah, I'm gonna give you some scripts, yeah, your strategies and what to do. Okay, all that is great. But the first thing you got to get right is what's going on up here, because no matter what I tell you to do, what ideas I give you, what scripts I give you, if you don't believe that you can do it, you won't. Is that clear? Can I make it any clearer? And then remember the first quote. Yeah, good things may come to those who wait, but only what's left by those who hustle. And there are some very like think about this in every market under any market conditions or situations marilena i know you've been in real estate for a while how long i'm oh, too long 30 years 30 i'm 26 so that's good okay so we know and there are agents here that have been in real estate for a long time the market, real estate market has cycles up and down, buyer's market, seller's market, normal market, crazy market. It's, it's, it's this is not gonna last forever. Actually, there are many parts of the country right now where the market is already changing. Properties are sitting on the market. Buyers are not going wild anymore. So depending on where you are, yeah, this, this, is, not gonna, this is not gonna last forever. Let's put it that way. And the point I want to make about that is right now it is a crazy hot seller's market, the hottest market in real estate history, whatever. And there are a lot of agents capitalizing and finding great opportunities and selling hundreds of homes a year in this market right now. And there's some in every area, no matter where you are in the country, there are agents finding opportunities in this market. You do know that, right? So just go like this. Yeah, it's happening. We just got to figure out how to get you to be one of those agents. And it's going to start with you just getting that it's possible. There are opportunities out there. So Marilena, I know you're in Miami. I've been going through making notes for this webinar. And then yesterday I had a great idea because I go in the multiple listing once in a while, you know, I log in my MLS and stuff just for my, anyway, I'm looking to buy a property myself too. So I look and I have a safe. And yesterday I thought, you know, yeah, there are no listings because you know, this is all I hear from all of my clients. There's just no listings. There's no inventory. I don't know where to get a listing. So I went in my MLS and in Miami-Dade County, the county, it's, it's a large area. Um, I did a search in Miami in the last 30 days. I put list date starting 
March 25th through April 5th, which was yesterday. So that's 30 days. Everybody with me here? And active listings. How many homes, and some of them may already be pending. I just put status active, okay? How many homes are active right now that were listed between March 25th and March uh, and April 5th? Everybody with me here? So this is not the full number because of some of the ones that were listed in that period of time might already be pending. 3,000 new listings in the last 30 days in Miami-Dade County. There are no listings? I mean, please hear me in what I'm saying. You need to go in because you, you hear stuff, you've been telling yourself a story about there's no listings, there's no inventory, oh, nobody's, oh, listings are hard to get, hard to get, hard to get. You've been saying this and hearing this and talking about this for a while. So you need to find evidence for yourself of the opposite. So you can start like creating a new story here. Make sense? So you should go in your multiple listing and do the same thing I did. And actually, in for the county where Fort Lauderdale is, if you're not in South Florida, you may not know, Broward County, which is just north of Miami, I sold real estate in Broward County, where greater Fort Lauderdale is. It's a big county. I used to average drive time to a listing appointment for me was 45 minutes. I mean, I didn't even think twice. I didn't even blink I'm willing to go 45 minutes to take a listing and make at my average commission was 6,000. I mean, right now in Miami, it's, it's like, wait, 10, $12,000. It's like not even a question. And I, the, the information I give you, 3,000 new listings that are still active, that were listed in the last 30 days are only in Miami. If I would have gone down to Broward, because if I was selling real estate today, I live in Miami Beach. I'm in the north part of Miami, Dade County. I'd be going to Broward. I'd have no problem. I pro yeah, with the traffic, I might drive an hour and a half to a listing. A listing taken today is a listing sold. If you even remotely know what you're doing with price, okay? So would I drive an hour and a half each way to make... Ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000? Yeah, all day long, okay? And a lot of your listing presentations might be on Zoom. So I actually did a search to see how many active listings came up in the last 30 days in, in Broward County. And I don't remember the number, I didn't even write it down, but it was close to 2,400. So now we're talking about, if I am an agent, that would be me, I'd be working both counties, there were 5,500 residential properties listed in the last 30 days. If my goal is to take 10 or 20 listings a month, could I take, could I list 20 out of over 5,000? Who says there's no listings? Maria Elena, please give me a couple of thoughts here. So it's, it's all about the mindset. Jackie, you know, if I, if I, if I wake up in the morning and I say, well, today I'm not going to get a listing. Guess what? I am not going to get a listing. Oh yeah. But if I wake up and say, today is my day, I'm going to get a listing. Well, there, I just set my intention. Go for it. That's right. Absolutely. And look for evidence. Okay. Go check out, go see that there are properties being listed. You're just not the one taking those listings, but that doesn't mean there, there are no listings being taken. Can we make that clear? And for you to be the agent taking those listings, you're going to have to change what's going on in your head about it. So here you go. First step is changing how you're thinking about it. And here's why. In order for you to find your next listing, and I'm going to talk to you just in one minute here on where to find them and where they are and what you need to be doing, you're going to have to take action because remember, good things may come if you, if you sit and wait. Yeah, 
you know, somebody may knock on your door or call you and say, hey, come list my house. Um, if you've been doing that for the last few months, how is that working out? Have you gotten a lot of listings just by sitting and waiting? You're going to have to hustle. So you're going to have to take action. And you're going to have, look, this webinar, I'm not going to give you the magic answer. Oh, I'm going to take, I don't have to do anything. I just watch Jackie and Marilyn on this webinar and I'll just, listings will come. That's not going to happen. Okay. I know you're probably disappointed. You're going to have to work and take massive action. And when you believe that you will find opportunities, like Marilena says, when you set your intention in, in, the, in the morning and you know what you're working for, the actions you take, they're going to flow. They're going to flow because your, your, your mind and your body and your actions are congruent. If you're taking action, but you don't believe in yourself and what you're doing, it's going to be a struggle. Hmm. Do you prefer flow or struggle? The flow is going to come from your mind and your beliefs being aligned with what it is you're doing. That's really important right there. And so massive action, you know, it's the belief and taking massive action because we know sitting around and waiting for people to knock on your door, come call you and tell you, oh, please list my house. Uh, that's not happening. Right, it really doesn't happen much in any market. So who, and I want you to write down, I'm gonna give you several, I'm gonna give you nine different types of people that you should be talking to. And Marilena, I'll, I'll stop once in a while because I wanna get your, you know, your, your input here. Who should you talk to? Number one, you have to talk to people who have to sell. There are homeowners in every market, in every city, in every, every area in this country, in Canada, in Europe, that have to sell. The market conditions for the people who have to sell, they don't care. They have to sell. Whether it's a divorce, a death in the family, a job transfer. The people go through situations in life where they have to sell. Marilena? Totally. Every day. Uh, right? Or they, they become unemployed. Uh, whatever the reason may be, those people are out there. So you got to, that's one category. Number two, you have to talk to people who want to sell. They don't have to sell, but they want to sell. Wanting to sell could be just as high motivation as having to sell. They may want to downsize. They may want a bigger home. They may want a bigger lot. They may want to move close to their family. They don't have to, but they want to. That's category number two. Here's number three. They, the people that want to sell, but they want to do it later. So maybe here's an example. Marilena, if you come up with examples, please interrupt me, okay? An example of somebody who wants to sell but want to do it later is I want to wait for the kids to finish school or graduate or something, some life event that they're waiting for. That's number three. Number four, the people who might consider selling if it makes sense. And this could be vacation homes, people that own second homes or three or more, they have multiple properties and they don't, they don't have to sell. They may not even want to sell, but if it makes sense, they would consider. Here is number five, one of my favorites, you all know, people that used to be for sale, expireds, new, old expireds, terminated, unconditionally withdrawn listings, yeah? Number six, the sellers who are on the market right now, but are not sold yet. Fizzbos, they're on, they're on the market, they're for sale. 
How about this category? And I'm sure some of you have heard this in the last few months. They want to sell, but they're afraid to be homeless. We're gonna role play that a little bit, okay? We'll talk about that objection in just a minute. Number eight are the people that they don't wanna sell, they don't have to sell now or later, or they weren't for sale, but they would consider selling if they knew how great a seller's market this is. And you may be thinking, well, doesn't everybody know how great a seller's market this is? No, we're real estate agents, all of us here. We take for granted that everybody really knows what's going on. No, not everybody knows what's going on. If they're not thinking about selling, wanting, they, they, they have no clue. They're worried about their day-to-day -day stuff and job and money and whatever people worry about. And the last one, number nine, the people that have been in this forbearance situation that are having financial issues. And right now would be a incredibly great time for them to sell their home, save their equity, save their credit and put some money in the bank. Do you see how many opportunities are out there? Marilena, give me a couple of thoughts. So as, as, as you're saying all of these, Jackie, I'm, I'm going, okay, so this is awesome. This is great. But if we start to play secret agent, we'll never get to any of these people. <laughs> I think that's like, that is a big um, sort of uh, small issue with uh, real estate agents in general, right? From our experience. If you don't, how are you going to find these people if you don't want to talk to anybody? You don't want anybody to know you're a real estate agent. You don't call anybody. You don't pass out cards. You don't let anybody know. Yeah, the secret agent. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> now, keep writing this down. I gave you the list of all the opportunities. You have to be the expert for people. When you're communicating with homeowners, all of these nine different categories that I gave you, you have to be the expert so you can explain to them why they should sell now, what the benefits would be. And if let's say, oh, well, I'm afraid I won't be able to find something to buy. Guess what? That's an objection and objections for the sellers, it's a problem that they don't have a solution for. That's what it is, okay? You need to be able to provide solutions. That's what experts, knowledgeable, experienced professional agents do. Because if, if they have a problem and you cannot give them a solution, why should they work with you? Why should they list with you, hire you? That's your job. So I'm gonna help you out with some of the solutions. So I wrote something else down that I wanna make sure I, you also write it down. Make them feel confident that you will take, you know what you're doing, like you know what you're doing. They're not gonna be homeless. This will be taken care of. I love the line. I used to use that actually when I was selling real estate because in the early 2000s, Marilena, I know for sure you, you've been in real estate long enough and some of the agents here have also. In the early 2000s, I mean, we had a pretty hot market. Well, it was a revolving door. I remember in Broward, this is 2000, one, two, three, four, five, six, up until, you know, the bottom fell out. But for, for all those years, and that's, those are the years I was listing 150 expires and physicals a year. I remember people had this same fear of like, I can't find something to buy. And I used to say, Maria Elena, I, I, I completely understand your concern. I mean, I quite honestly, based on everything you're hearing about the market, I would be concerned too if I were you. And let me just assure you, Maria Elena, I have never had a homeless client yet. And you're not gonna be the first one. So just saying that, I'm not even 
I'm not giving them any solutions. But what I'm saying is just, I don't know, they can like, dig, they could breathe. They could say, well, you know, maybe she knows something. I don't know. I get, this sounds like somebody that will take care of me. That's what I mean by offering solutions to their problems. Marilena, anything you want to share? Yeah. You know, the way that you said it, Jackie, it comes with so much confidence mm -hmm. and passion that, hey, don't worry. I got this. I got your back. I know we're going to find you a property and a property you're really, really, really going to love. So don't worry. I got your back. You said it that way. Exactly. Well, and <laughs> I like how you said I said it like that with confidence because I always say to my clients, the audio and the video need to match, meaning what you're saying and how you're saying it need to be congruent. When I say some, like, Maria Elena, you're not going to be home. This is not, I got to say it confidently. Otherwise, it takes away the power of what I'm saying 100%. And we don't know how long it will be before the market changes in your area. I already said it and I'll repeat in some parts of the country, it's already started to change. I have clients in Maryland and Seattle, it's already slowing down and it's going to happen. We just don't know where, uh, wh where, when and where, depending on where you are. What you wanna remember is no matter what is going on with the market, whether it's a hot, crazy seller's market, buyer's market, normal market, whether it's uh, December around the holidays, November, December, or people give you the holiday objection. Well, I'm going to wait till next year. So whether it's November, January, July, or October, regardless of the market or time of the year, now is always the best time for them to sell and you better be able to show them that ex express that to them because otherwise people are always gonna think well i'm gonna wait till after holidays no i'm gonna wait till the kids graduate i'm gonna wait till this i'm gonna do that or i'm gonna wait for the market to change you know this is a big one now okay people so let's talk about the homeless situation i want you to write down three solutions to the homeless situation, okay? The first one is, you know, when someone says, well, you know, I know I can sell my house, but I, you know, I'm, I'm concerned I'm not gonna be able to find, or I'm gonna overpay, you know, it's the price, prices are too high. I may not be able to buy what I want. You know, I don't wanna overpay. There's a great line here, and I want you to get this, write it down and use it. Mr. Seller, I understand your concern. Marilyn, I hear you. Yes, it, yeah, prices are pretty crazy right now. This is one of the hottest sellers market in history. And so your concern about selling your home and not be able to afford the next home you're gonna buy, right? Because prices are high. Okay. So Marilena, would you rather wait for the market to change so you can sell low and buy low also? Oh no, 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 no. I wanna sell high and buy low. <laughs> and buy low, exactly. So you wanna ask them that, you wanna acknowledge, yeah. So, so are you concerned about selling? Obviously you're gonna sell it for a high price, but also paying a high price for the price. So would you would you rather sell low and buy low? No. Just that. Okay. It's a very short little script right there. And then you're gonna you could say something like this. And exactly what she said, you know, sell everybody wants to sell high and buy low, right? Real estate stocks, yeah, we all want that. And you could say something like this, Marilena, yes, I, I mean I, I hear you. And I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how long it will be before the market starts to change, but it will. You know, it's just a matter of time. And I'm sure you would agree with me that it's, it's almost impossible for us to pick the high price in the market and the low. So here are a couple of options for you. 
Okay, option number one is, and this can definitely, I mean, you gotta, you, you can't promise them, but you have to offer it as a possibility. Because the market is so hot right now, Maria Elena, there are a lot of buyers that would be willing to close on your property and allow you to live here for the next few months. So you'd be able to stay in your home, have your cash in the bank and be in a great position. So if and when you find that right home to buy, you'll be ready to go and have no contingencies. Now, if we can find a buyer that would be willing to allow you to rent your property back for a period of time, would you wanna sell it? Oh my God, yes, of course, that's ideal, right? That's one potential solution. The other potential solution is, Marielena, obviously I know you want to sell your home right now and get a great price. Because again, we don't know how long it's going to be before the market starts to slow down. And interest rates have already started to go up. So that may be a sign that we may see prices stabilizing sometime in the next couple of months. So how about this, Marielena? How about if, let's say we sell your home, we'll get, we get you a great price for your property and somehow the buyer is not willing to rent it back because they need to move in right away. What if we find you a great property to rent? And maybe you could stay there for six months to a year. Remember, you got your home sold, you have the money in the bank, you're in a position now to buy the next home as soon as it becomes available. And if we find you a great property to rent, you may even be able to stay there a little bit longer and wait to catch that bottom market so you could buy at, at a much lower price than you would right now. Doesn't that sound like something that you could potentially do? Of course. Actually, Jackie, that happened to me in that hot market. Yeah. I wish, I really wish I would have, I did sell really high and I bought high. I honestly wish I would have just rented for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I hear, you know what? I actually sold in that market too. I sold, I think it was, wait, it was just before the bottom fell out. I think it was 2008. I mean, like we were already seeing, oh my gosh, something's going on here. And yeah, it was an interesting market too for those who were in real estate at that time because with all the short sales, foreclosures, like nobody knew what to do. Like most real estate agents had never seen a market like that. And so many agents got out of real estate. I sold just before. And I actually rented for a year and ended up buying a foreclosure. So that kind of worked out, sort of. Yeah. So finding solutions. And then the last one I want to give you is, Mr. Seller, here's, here's something that I will do for you. Because I actually do this on a daily basis. We'll talk about where you want to buy the next property, exactly what you're looking for. And I will prospect in those areas. I will be talking to every homeowner in the areas and the type of properties you want to buy to see if I can find someone who'd be willing to sell their home to you. I actually do that on a daily basis. So I'd be happy to do that for you, okay? You should only say that if you're actually going to do it, okay? So don't don't lie and say you're going to do it and then you don't want to do it. I got to stop touching this table because I'm moving my computer. Um, okay. So we talked about that. So you got the three options. Now I want to share with you. Okay. So we got all those nine types of sellers. Okay. So where are they? Okay. How do I find these people? So in order of priority, I'm going to share with you who should you be, who should you be talking to every day because it's going to require massive action. So who? Number one, the first conversations of every day for you will be the expireds, 
and unconditionally withdrawn listings, whatever the status is in Miami, it's a canceled listing. I don't know your MLS. So I say unconditionally withdrawn. So you know, it's a listing that was manually taken out of the MLS prior to the expiration date and the seller is free to hire another agent. Those are your first calls every day. Why? Because those are the people who used to sell like right now, they were on the market yesterday. Okay. And I know some agents to say, well, you know, there are not, not a lot of expireds right now in, I have access to espresso agent, which gives numbers for expireds and FISBOs and for rent to buy owners and all that. Yesterday, I logged in espresso agent and I, it was Monday morning. Like, let me see how many expireds came up in Miami-Dade County, Broward County and South Palm Beach, which is going a little further now. How many expireds with a phone number came up? Over 150 on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the majority of them are Dade and Broward, which for me, if I was selling real estate, I'd be all over, over 150 over the weekend. There are no expireds, excuse me. Okay, second category, right? In order of priority for sale by owners. The people that are selling, they're selling. There were a hundred FISBOs in Dade Broward and South Palm Beach in the last 10 days, a hundred of them. Oh, could I, could I list five or 10 of those? Oh yeah. Number three, the priority of people you're calling, your past clients and your sphere of influence. And you should take the total number of people you have in that database of yours, let's say, if you, oh, I'm not going to attempt to do math right now. Oh my gosh. Um, I could, okay, like two plus two, I could do that. Jacqueline is live, smiling at me. You, if you have a thousand people in your past client center, sphere of influence database, okay? Take that number and divide it by 55. How many is that? Do it for me, Jacqueline. You gotta unmute, oh, she can unmute herself. Okay, Marilena, you could do it for me. A thousand divided by 55. So- 18. 18, thank you. I know it's close to 20. So 55 is the average number of days that you will work in a quarter, in a three month period of time. Average working days. So you take the total number of people in your database, you divide it by 55, and that's the number of people you talk to every day. Now, most of you don't have a thousand people. Now, what I'm referring to as database are not your leads. These are not leads. These are not internet leads. You're buying leads here. No, no, no. We're talking people you know, people you've done business with or you know them personally. Okay, leads a totally different story. They're gonna come in later in the morning, and this should be happening in the morning. You're this, you're gonna call new expireds, Facebooks, and then that certain number of people in your database. I how many, I don't know if you know the answer, Madeline. I was thinking about this, so I'll ask you. How many past clients and sphere, not leads, do you think the average real estate agent has? The average real estate agent doesn't even have a database. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Definitely. Or they don't have it organized or, yeah. Well, I fell into that category because all I did was call FISBOs and expireds every day. Okay. So, don't, so how many average, right, from your experience with the agents that you work with? I would say about... Probably the average agent, average, has about maybe, if they're lucky, 300 people in their database. I, I was thinking it could, it's not even close to 1,000. Yeah. So, okay. And some of you may be new to real estate and you're thinking, well, I don't even, I, I, first of all, I'm new to real estate. I don't have that many past clients and I don't know 300 people. So... Yeah, you're gonna have to talk to people you don't know. Now, if you have 300 people in your database, you're gonna 
300 divided by 55 is approximately six. I'm just dividing it by three because it's a thousand. Okay, so around six a day. So there you go. You just talk to six a day. And who do you call next? Old expireds. Old expireds are a gold mine right now. These are people who, and when I say old, is anyone that didn't expire today? Okay, could have been, so you go chronological order backwards, but they're expireds that came off the market three months, six months, a year ago, even two years ago. And they have no idea that the market, they, they expired because they were overpriced. They decided not to sell and they have no idea what's going on with the market right now. And if you call him and you share the benefits of selling now, there you go. There's a listing. Old for sale by owners too. I have a client in Canada that in the last, I think it was last week, um, Jacqueline Eden, you probably know her from the, the, the live calls we do. She recently listed two old for sale by owners. Now, I had so many FISBOs in the early 2000s, but I never really called FISBOs older than three months. She's talking like they were on, on the market as a FISBO a year, I don't know, a year and a half ago. She talked to them, they listed. The next category are just listed and just sold. Now, this is calling around a neighborhood. Now, you're never gonna run out of people to call because when you, I mean, never, okay? Because you just pick a neighborhood and you call every homeowner and the script, actually, you go on salesxtraining.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and you'll be able to download my just listed, just sold script, which is, the best just list just sold script ever known to real estate agents. It is a great script. And the reason why it's great is it's conversational. And there are three different reasons why you would make these calls. To see if they wanna sell, to see if they might wanna buy also once they sell, if they don't want to sell, do they know someone who wants to sell or buy? And if they don't, the third reason is, is this someone that I had a really good conversation with that I could potentially put in my sphere database and start sending emails to market reports, da, 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 that in the future might do business with me. So these are great calls and it is a great script and it has those dialogues in there, okay? So go download it, salesxtraining.com. Um, wow, I still have a list of six things I wanna tell you. So Marilena, I don't know, just anything you wanna add to all that we've talked about so far? I think everything that you're, you're talking about, Jackie, is amazing. I think the, the, the challenge for most people on this call and probably the average agent is just putting it in their calendar. And if it's in their calendar, it will exist. If it's not, they just don't know, they don't have any direction where to go when they wake up. Yeah, a hundred percent. Jacqueline says yes. A hundred percent. And here, let me just speak to this calendar thing real quick. 9 a.m. until noon. Monday through Friday should be on your calendar for prospecting. It's that simple. That's it. You know, don't overcomplicate this thing. Oh, my schedule. Da, 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 da. This is your career. If, <clears throat> unless you have a second job, nine to five job, and then your hours are, are, different. I trust none of you that are here right now do because you're here. So you don't, you're, well, I mean, you could be. Most of you, real estate is your full-time job and you really don't have a career. You don't have a job. You don't have a career and you're not going to have consistent income unless you consistently prospect so you can find listings. This was about 
how do I find my next listing? Well, you, you I mean, there's a ton of people, you, there's endless. Yeah, for most of you, if you live in a large metropolitan area, there are millions of people. Like you're never gonna run out of, you're calling neighborhoods. There are plenty of expired visibles. There are listings, there are properties coming on the market, but you're gonna have to stop being that secret agent that Maria Elena talked about. You have to talk to people. And it should be happening between 9 a.m. and noon, because if you don't do it in the morning, it ends up not happening, okay? There are so many reasons why it needs to happen in the morning. Just trust me on this. And you got to develop the habit of doing that. You know what? It, it's not easy to change something, you know, to start the... Um, this quote, I remember now, I read it yesterday when I was walking out of the gym and it said, the fears we don't face become our limit. Wow. Some of you, isn't that a great quote? Yeah, I was walking out and it was on the wall. They change it every now and then. I stopped, grabbed my phone and I typed it and emailed it to myself. Because some of you may be sitting here thinking, oh, I'm afraid to talk to people I don't know. It's a real fear. I, I talk to agents every day, potential clients, clients, and yeah, it's a, it's a real fear because you don't know what to say. You don't know what objects, you don't know how to handle things. Okay, well, you're setting limits for yourself unless you're willing to put yourself out there. And what would you prefer? To face your fears and overcome them because it's the only way. I mean, action is the only thing that's gonna help you overcome fear. Thinking about it only makes it bigger. Action removes it, you know, massive action. The more action, the quicker you do it, the, the quicker it'll go away. Or you can continue to live worried about where your next commission check is gonna come from and not have enough money to survive. Because real estate can give you that opportunity to really have financial freedom. It did for me and so many people I know and so many great agents and so many clients. 26 years ago, I was literally broke, like 100%. Like had no, I was actually not working. My ex-husband had a job making, you know, week to week paying bills. And, and real estate changed my life and it could do the same thing for you. But guess what? I didn't sit around and waited for people to find me. I was hustling. So 9 a.m. to noon, Monday through Friday. So a couple of things. Let me share these ideas with you because I wrote them down. So I want you to have them. One listing appointment a day will change your life. One listing appointment a day. That's what changed my life, just setting one qualified listing appointment every day, Monday through Friday. How do you do that? How do you make that happen? I'm gonna give you six ideas here. Decide, this is the first one, right now. You gotta decide right now. What time will you go to sleep at night? Because if you're one of those that go to sleep at midnight, one in the morning. I know a lot of people like that. It's not likely that you'll be in the office ready to go full of energy by nine o'clock. And you're, you got the wrong schedule going on and it starts with the night before, what you're doing the night before. Now, I, I'm not saying you need to wake up at 4.30 in the morning like me. I just, it's natural for me now natural. When I was selling real estate, I used to get up at five in the morning to be ready. I used to start making calls at eight o'clock, 8 a.m. But I had two small kids and I wanted to, I didn't take them to school, but I got them ready to go to school. You know, I wanted to see my kids in the morning, dress my daughter, my son. But I also, before they even got up, I wanted to do a little bit of, you know, I had a treadmill in my house. I wanted to work on my mindset, review my goals, read a few pages of a book, watch a motivational video. I wanted to practice. I wanted to get myself ready. So if you're not going to sleep at probably no later than 9 p.m., gonna be tough to get started and create that routine in the morning. Here's step number two. Spend some time over the weekend 
or at the very least the day before, preparing the list of phone numbers that you're going to call every day. I recommend Espresso Agent because you don't have to prepare anything. It's just there. You open, you open the browser, you go on espressoagent.com and expireds are there, Fizbos for rent by owners. You get access to neighborhood searches so you don't have to do the legwork, but you gotta have at least, at least 500 phone numbers ready to go at any given time. Because for you to, when you're dialing, from 9 a.m. until noon with the goal of speaking with 30 people and setting one appointment. It should be 10 contacts a day. For you to talk to 30 people in three hours and set an appointment, you're probably going to have to dial at least 300 phone numbers. Have realistic expectations because I hear agents saying all the time, oh, people don't answer the phone. The numbers are disconnected. They're wrong numbers. Uh-huh. Yeah. What else? It's always been the same. So if you if you if you have if you expect everybody's going to answer the phone and talk to you, you got unrealistic expectations, and then you're going to be disappointed. Number three, practice and role play. Fifteen minutes of practice, fifteen minutes of role play prior to getting on the phone. So that requires you to be doing that at eight thirty a.m. Back to going to sleep at a reasonable time. Number four, when you wake up in the morning, whatever time you wake up, whether it's six, seven, not too late, hopefully, so you could get ready, do not allow anything to distract you. Don't open your email. Don't, this is such a huge thing, even for me right now, okay? It's like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to like ever, we, we sleep with our phones on our night table, right or wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I, I, this is one of my new disciplines right now to wake up in the morning because I, I do, you know, some breathing, prayer, meditation for an hour. I don't want to, I don't want to see if there are any emails. I don't want to see what my daughter posted on Instagram. I just. I don't because it distracts me. Stay off your email. Don't start looking at files, looking at problems and things you have to do. Take the time between when you wake up in the morning, when you open your eyes until noon to work on things that strengthen your mindset. Improving your skills, practice, role play and taking massive action. After 12 o'clock, now you go deal with whatever else you have to deal with. Disable any kind of snooze button if you use an alarm clock. Do not snooze your alarm, okay? Set it, if I wake up without an alarm, but if you are setting an alarm, set it for when you gotta actually get up because Snoozing your alarm in the morning is starting your day by procrastinating. That's not setting the right intention for the day. So stop that. And the last thought is your expectations. We get what we expect. You know, I said in the beginning, if you believe things are going to work out, you'll see opportunities. If you believe it won't, you'll see obstacles. You have to expect that everyone that you speak with will set an appointment with you. And I know some of you are saying, well, that's not realistic. What's your option? To expect that they won't? Then why are you, why are you talking to people? Maria Elena, final thoughts, closing thoughts. I'm, I'm just listening to all of this that you've been saying, Jackie, and Things that you and I have been hearing about forever, and probably people here too. Um, it's not hard to do. You just got to get very disciplined and do it. Yeah. That's it. Just get disciplined and agree to commit to what your, your dream is. Because if you don't commit to it, no one else will. Yeah. I love that thought. Like 
discipline. One of my favorite quotes is a discipline quote. It's a long one, so I don't, I don't think I could remember the whole thing by heart. But self-discipline is a form of freedom. It is. It's a form of freedom. Discipline, sometimes people hear the word discipline, they say, oh, that's restricting. You know, I won't be able to do whatever I want. No, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Because when you don't have self-discipline, then you're, you're trapped in not being able to accomplish the things you desire in life because you're all over the place. And that's not fun. Yeah, you prefer to be just free and be gu feeling guilty all the time because you're not doing what you're supposed to do, worrying because you don't have enough money or you can't do this, you can't do that. I mean, self-discipline is definitely a form of freedom. And what you said about the dreams and the goals, in order to develop that discipline, you got to have something that you desire to achieve in life like whatever it is that you know what it doesn't matter what it is nobody it should be the judge of what that is for oh that's why would I want to you know let's say I don't know there's some guys here and they want to drive a Lamborghini well why would you want to spend that kind of money like listen if that's what you desire and and that's gonna get you going and it's gonna get you excited to do what you're supposed to do don't let anybody tell you that that makes no sense or you don't need that or you know you don't need much and why do you want to make so much money it's like that's conversation people that are broke you know the people that are wealthy and and are abundant they don't talk like that so be careful who you listen to decide on what your desire is what your dream is and it could be something like a car it could be your purpose in life i don't care or anywhere in between but you gotta know what that is because otherwise you got no direction. So having the direction and a passion for what you're looking to achieve is going to, to inspire you with the discipline because it's not easy, okay? Maybe you, you hear all this and you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm kind of inspired and motivated. And then tomorrow morning you wake up and it's like, oh, what happened with that? You know, the motivation is gone because it's external motivation. When it's from your dream and your goals, now it's internal. It's there. And you keep reminding yourself of it. And you keep reading great motivational books. You know, I say to my clients, bombard your brain with powerful, positive, motivational, inspirational ideas 24-7. Because we all need that. We're surrounded by way too much negative stuff and naysayers and people. So the more you bombard your brain with positive stuff, you don't leave space for the negative. You know, it starts to just flush out. And we need that so that you can get going every day. There are listings out there. 3,000, Marielena, in 30 days, just in Miami. What do you mean there are no listings? This is crazy. There's so many opportunities. My team should get at least 10%. One, why not? I mean, somebody's getting them. And now you know exactly what you need to do so you could be the ones taking those listings. So thank you for showing up. Thank you, Marilyn. It was so fun. Great to see you. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Take care. Go download the Just List, Just Sold script on salesxtraining.com. See you next month. Bye-bye. Okay.